Today's podcast is sponsored by The Cooperators. As part of your local community, their advisors understand the challenges facing businesses like yours. They're here to help you protect what you've worked so hard to build and ease your mind with professional advice, the right insurance solutions, and a full range of coverage options. Visit cooperators.ca to find a local advisor today. Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Hello and welcome to Edmonton's podcast with Mario Tonaguzzi on Canada's podcast network. Joining me today is Connie Stacy, who is owner of Growing Greener Innovations. Thanks for joining us today, Connie. Well, thanks for having me. Well, tell me, first of all, what Growing Greener Innovations is and what you do. Uh, some days I'm not sure, but uh, we're a, a battery energy storage manufacturer that uh, works and builds our stuff right here in Edmonton. Um, and mostly what we do is we really focus on uh, new technology that helps advance that industry and helps advance uh, uh, clean energy uh, resources and reducing great greenhouse gas, that kind of good stuff. So how did you uh, start this and when? Uh, so the original concept for our system uh, was born about September 2013 when my twin boys were about three months old. Uh, and it was actually kind of a fun story because um, I have three kids now, but at the time it was the twin boys. And uh, if you have multiples, let me tell you, everything is about sleep. And uh, I was walking them uh, in the stroller and they were sound asleep and I passed by a house being built and they were running a diesel generator. And I thought, you wake up these babies, <laughs> I'm going postal. Um, so that kind of got me thinking, well, could we not find a better solution than diesel generators? Um, they're loud, they're t- terrible on the environment, they're quite expensive to operate. Um, and so I started to look into the market and I started to question, could we find a way to use a battery um, or clean energy option instead? Uh, and that really is what kind of got the ball rolling. I actually incorporated in 2014 uh, and it was uh, late 2015 or fall of 2015 that we really started to kind of move. That was the point at which I hired my first staff and and all that good kind of stuff that so kind of picked up from there. Okay. What do you, what do you exactly have in Edmonton as a presence? Uh, well, right now we're in the process of switching. So the first couple of units we built, which wasn't our patented technology, uh, we were convinced <laughs> to go overseas for the manufacturing. Um, and then about, uh, which wasn't really my preference, uh, but we had a lot of advisors kind of pushing us that direction. Uh, about two years ago, we started the process of moving everything here to Edmonton. So we're not fully product- uh, producing here in Edmonton yet, but we expect to be within the t- next 12 months, hopefully before the end of 2021. Uh, and in Edmonton itself, we have uh, 11 full-time staff and uh, a few part-time and some contractors. And that we expect to increase quite a bit over the next year. So I'm just curious, like, what's your background? Uh, anything related to this in any way? Yes. Um, so I actually came from IT, uh, so very much in tech, uh, but not engineering. And the real kind of premise for the system came from uh, basically a server room UPS. Uh, every computer server room in the world has an uninterrupted power supply. Um, and that really kind of was the spark of what got me uh, on the idea of batteries as a solution. Um, so, I mean, I didn't really know much about chemistry and things like that. Uh, it was definitely a big leap. and. Um, uh, definitely ended up bringing on some pretty amazing electrical engineers and electronics technicians and stuff like that. But uh, it really kind of came from that original kind of IT background. So tell me uh, uh, just a little bit more about uh, uh, where your solutions are used. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, one of the things with batteries that's kind of amazing, it's you really could be servicing anybody because who doesn't use electricity? Um, I mean, really, it comes down to that. So. Um, Right now, uh, we mostly have small units that are used in a variety of different projects. Like we um, provided the equipment for a small UN uh, development program project in South Sudan. Um, We have lots of units that are out there for camping and things like that and at uh, battery distributors. But our bigger markets really come in basically multiple groups. So we have a contract right now with the Canadian Department of Defense 
Um, and we're really, yeah, it's super exciting. Um, effectively, the, the military is really looking at how can they reduce their carbon footprint, but also reduce their costs. Uh, and all of their camps right now run on massive uh, diesel generators. And uh, so we're working with them right now on, on kind of lightening the load of what individual soldiers carry, as well as reducing uh, the emissions at camps by going with um, a clean power solution. Uh, the other couple of big areas that we're working with is um, we actually have a really exciting project pending in India. Um, so keep your fingers crossed for us because it's a, a contract with the government of India where we would be electrifying 25,000 homes in Northeast India. Um, so yeah, really exciting one because these are folks who literally have only candlelight. Um, and then the other end of things, uh, and this is much more for demonstration in the long run, we think partners would take on this role, um, but we are doing some work in uh, industrial energy efficiency. And effectively that's your smart city stuff. So um, managing loads so that you're reducing costs, uh, reducing burden on the electrical grid and good stuff like that. So when you, you know, when you uh, uh, mentioned some of these clients and, and customers that you have, and potentially have. Uh, does it blow you away thinking, going back to when you first had the seed of an idea to where you are now? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's funny, I've, I've had this big roller coaster because at the start, you know, I saw this opportunity in construction and oil and gas. I mean, I grew up in Alberta. I grew up in Fort McMurray, actually. Oh, okay. I'm a Nufi by birth. Um, you know, I think it makes the perfect combo because I've got that uh, chatty chatty uh, paired with some good uh, business skills behind me. Um, but uh, as I started to explore, I thought, wow, this market is actually gigantuan. And I mean, this was quite a few years ago when a lot of people really weren't talking about batteries yet. Um, so I thought, wow, this is going to be enormous. And then I realized that in a lot of ways, I was ahead of the curve. And I would talk to people and they're like, I don't get it. Um, and they were like, I don't see a market for your product. Uh, and I thought, oh, oh. Maybe this isn't going to be as big as I thought. Uh, so there was definitely some roller coaster moments, uh, but deep down, I think I always knew that we could make this something rather extraordinary. Mm, excellent. Now, recently, uh, you won the fifty thousand dollar purse prize for the pitch for the purse finale uh, at, uh, through the the forum. Can you tell me a little bit about that? What uh, first of all, what is the forum, and uh, and what was this? Uh, a pitching event of all about? Sure. So the forum, uh, it was actually formerly the um, Forum for Women's Entrepreneurs. So it's uh, specifically a pitch competition for uh, women-owned businesses. Um, and, it, you know, as you're well aware, there's certainly lots of pitch competitions out there. Uh, and this one actually came to my attention because um, our advisor over at Alberta Innovates sent me the link and said, you know, I think you should uh, apply for this. You know, you're good at pitching. You've got a great company jump on in there. Okay, sure, why not? Um, and at first, honestly, I don't think I took it serious enough. I don't think I realized how much work it was going to be. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I got in there and uh, luckily I made it to the semifinals. And, you know, I didn't really do my best job in the semifinals. So I was surprised when I got through to the finals. And then I thought, oh, wow, this is a lot stiffer competition than I was realizing. And there really were some tremendously great businesses in there. Um, so then I took it a lot more serious when I got to the finals, uh, and it was definitely a lot of work, but it was, um, very effective. Uh, one of the things that it did for me was they assigned us, um, each a mentor for the finals. Mm. And, uh, the gentleman I was working with, very experienced businessman, uh, by the name of Christian Chia, who owns a whole pile of car, car dealerships, actually. And, um, he and I were chatting about how to try and bring across the technology without getting too deep into the technology, because that's one of the challenges with being in deep tech. You know, if you start talking too uh, far along about things like charging and discharging schemas, people kind of gloss over. <laughs> so uh, it was definitely a good learning experience for me. And then, uh, you know, obviously winning was fantastic. Today's podcast is brought to you by The Cooperators. You can count on them to support you and your business with a full range of insurance coverage options. Their products provide the flexibility you want with the protection you expect. To find a Cooperators advisor near you, visit cooperators.ca. It's been interesting you mentioned that because as a, as a journalist, and also as a communications person, that's what I always tell people, uh, you know, 
dumb it down, so to speak, right? Uh, make it in, uh, you know, in understandable terms, especially when we get into certain industries, like technology is a perfect example that, you know, where, uh, you know, you, uh, you've got to make it understandable to people, uh, you know, to know what you're, what you're saying or else you're right. It just goes all the way over their head and you lose the purpose of communicating with them, right? Absolutely. And I think one of the things for us, um, and this is something I think we finally got refined to a good point with this uh, process was at first, I think we dumped it down too much um, and we made it too simple. And then people went, I don't see how your stuff is different. Mm. Right. And so then we upped how much we talked about the technology. And of course, then people were like, I, I'm so lost. <laughs> and so I think we finally found a nice sweet spot. <laughs> So what is the uh, uh, $50,000 prize uh, ticketed towards uh, for you? Well, it probably, you know, $500,000 worth of costs. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, it's mostly we're going to be putting it towards the certification of our next unit. Um, so certification is a fairly hefty cost uh, for, for batteries. So uh, it's about $130,000 to certify one new unit. So um, that obviously takes a nice big chunk off of that bill and kind of helps us forward in our commercialization process. Okay. What do you like uh, about being an entrepreneur? 99% uh, of everything. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I, I would say that, uh, honestly, you know, I love feeling heard. And, and that's not to say that I force my ideas on, on the team. I think we're really quite collaborative. Um, but one of the things that I didn't love in previous jobs was often like I'd have ideas and I want to share and help the company succeed. Um, but as a middle manager, often, you know, your voice kind of gets lost. Wow. Uh, and so for me, I think one of the biggest things I've really enjoyed is being able to put ideas out there for conversation and get that feedback and determine what is the best things we can do. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's probably the number one thing I enjoy the most. Not cool. Um, what don't you enjoy? <laughs> <laughs> cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Um, the big killer of startup. Honestly, I think um, when I started, the piece that I think I underestimated was I've worked for startups before and I've worked for yeah. giant international firms. Um, but what I did not realize was when you first start out, um, you're the, uh, the, what's the expression, the candlestick maker, the all of them at once, right? Yeah. Um, so learning things like payroll, well, I didn't know how to do payroll. Um, I was a very accomplished business person, but I certainly never done payroll before. So learning some of that stuff was tough. And for me, that, that cash flow piece was the toughest of all. Yeah. What about uh, uh, running and owning a business in Edmonton? Uh, um, what are the... I guess, advantages uh, of that? Well, you know, I actually think, um, and this is an interesting topic. Most people have disagreed with me. I will eventually win them over because I'm pretty convinced on this one. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I think a lot of people don't recognize is that with kind of the changing of how we do manufacturing, it's no longer the same advantage to go to overseas markets. I mean, we, if you look historically, we went to countries like China and India and so forth because yeah. of low cost of labor. But with automation and industry 4.0, there's less and less hands that touch a finished good. And our engineering was always here. So all of a sudden, you're looking at advantages of who, where can you get very inexpensive electricity and a really, really stable grid? Well, honestly, you'd be hard pressed to find a better place than the prairies in Canada. We yeah. have very, very few outages and we have basically the cheapest electricity in the world. And Canada's, um, I think currently tied for the lowest national average at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah. Um, and in Alberta, currently the residential rate is 8.5 cents. So we really, really are very competitive when it comes to the cost of electricity. Um, and honestly, I think the last time I had an outage in my home was maybe yeah. three years ago, <laughs> you know, and you compare that to places like uh, India where the power grid is down like weekly, you know, you'll see two, three hour outages in any given building. Um, and that's that's something that we don't have to worry about. So now you get business continuity. So, you know, when you add that to the fact that uh, Canada actually has more free trade than any other G7 country, and is in fact the only G7 country that has free trade with all the other G7 countries, suddenly your landing cost when you're exporting is is very competitive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, 
we uh, in Calgary here, we had an outage uh, recently, and uh, it was uh, 17 minutes, I think, uh, long. Yeah. Right? But still, like, like you go, holy smoke, what happened, right? <laughs> like, right? <laughs> Kids are running all around, going, what's going on? <laughs> And I mean, you think most of the, like most of the major cities, uh, you know, outside of the prairies are all on the coast. Well, now they get much more weather events. Uh, they're more likely to see various types of storms that will bring down the grid. We don't have that. I mean, cold is cold, let's face it, but it usually doesn't bring down the grid, um, which means we can keep plugging away. Yeah, exactly. So you're obviously very busy as a, uh, as a, in the, in the world of business and, uh, and you've mentioned three kids. So, what do you do, uh, you know, to, uh, I guess, maintain any sort of work-life balance? Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'll have to admit something that is a little sad to, to say, but I really, um, I, I don't keep up on things outside of, I have two things. I have my family and I have my work. Yeah. And outside of that, somebody give me the Cliffs notes because I'm not paying attention. Um, I rarely watch TV. I like to read. That's usually my kind of calm down thing in the evening. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I spend my time at work, I spend my time with my kids, um, and everything else for now is very much secondary to that. So, you know, I don't, I don't really feel the need to waste time on television shows and stuff like that. Once in a while, that's about it. <laughs> but, um, you mentioned you're from Fort McMurray? Yes. Born and raised, or...? Uh, I was born and come by chance, yes, like most new feet uh, of Fort McMurrayites. Um, but I grew up in Fort Murray. We moved out there when I was two. So actually, interestingly, my dad was the very first process operator Syncrude hired back in 1976. Oh, wow. Yeah. So been there a long time and then moved to Edmonton for university and state. So you've obviously, uh, you know, uh, seen firsthand the ups and downs that this province has, uh, especially <laughs> Fort McMurray, you know, with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, being so reliant on the oil patch. I guess you're part of the... Um, uh, the the new wave or the next wave, right? Uh, because the, the the province has always talked about the the need and the importance to diversify its economy. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of that? You know what? I think it's utterly crucial. But I think sometimes too, we've we've historically kind of pitted um, new technology and new uh, emerging industries against oil patch. Yeah. And I really I think that's the wrong attitude. I mean, we're a long ways from being done with oil and gas. Um, you know, that is something that is likely coming in a, in a kind of bigger picture, but I don't see it as a fight back and forth. I see it as creating new technology that helps that industry of oil and gas be more efficient uh, and cleaner so that everybody benefits. Um, and, you know, I think that diversifying just makes sense across the board because no matter what, what the, the, the gold is of the particular time, so oil and gas, eventually things change. Uh, and having a, a little bit more to rely on um, in terms of economic growth, it just makes sense. Okay, super. Well, thanks very much uh, for joining us today, Connie. My pleasure. Okay, that was Connie Stacy, who is owner of Growing Greener Innovations in Edmonton. This has been Edmonton's podcast with Mario Tanagusi on Canada's Podcast Network. Thanks for joining us today. Today's podcast was brought to you by the Cooperators Business Insurance. They're here to help make sure you and your business are protected today and into the future. Visit cooperators.ca to find a local advisor today.